All right, good morning. morning. So let's bow with a word of prayer before we start. Heavenly Father, Lord, um, we thank you for this service, Lord. We thank you for the ability to gather, and uh, we thank you for the men who sacrificed their lives so that we are free to do this. Uh, Father God, Lord, I pray for this exhortation that I'm about to deliver right now, Lord. I pray that it would be uh, your words and the truth that you would like me to bring to this con- uh, congregation, Lord. Uh, I pray that I would glorify you in all I say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so have you ever had an experience where you wish that you had a choice word spoken to you at an opportune moment? So I, I mean a reminder from Scripture to keep you on the straight and narrow, to keep your eyes on Jesus not on the tiny jigsaw puzzle or the engulfing storm around us, right? So I certainly do, and that's where this exhortation stems from. So we all know that humans forget quite a bit. We're all fallible. And tiny reminders can be very helpful and encouraging. We know God wanted Israel to remember him uh, and his miraculous works in Egypt and his sustenance in the desert. We know about the myriad times Israel forgot God, received reminders from prophets, and turned back to him. We can look at Joshua 4, 6, and 7, where he explained why they had to set up a memorial with stones from the Jordan. I'll read that uh, passage of scripture now. Let this be a sign among you, so that when your children ask later, saying, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall say to them, because the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, so these stones shall be a memorial to the sons of Israel forever. So God clearly told Israel to remember his precepts, And this is a very famous Bible verse, especially in the Christian homeschool community, Deuteronomy chapter 6. And I'll read it again, good for a reminder. You shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. This is all over scripture. And the Lord wanted Israel to remember him, his promises and his commands. Therefore, he gave them those commands. But he didn't stop there. He gave us encouragement and commands in the New Testament, and plenty of, and there there are plenty. So the Apostle Peter in the second, or the first chapter of his second epistle, uh, I'm going to read that. It's a lengthy passage, but the context is relevant. But he makes it a priority to remind his fellow believers of the hope they have in Christ and the ideals they need to follow. So I'm going to start in verse 4. So he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature. So seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these things he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Now for this very reason also, applying all diligence, in your faith supply moral excellence, in your moral excellence knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, love. For if these qualities are yours and now are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you, For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly supplied to you. Therefore, I will always be ready to remind you of these things, even though you already know them, and have been established in the truth which is present with you. I consider it right, as long as I am in this earthly dwelling, to stir you up by way of reminder, knowing that the laying aside of my earthly dwelling is imminent, as also our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will also be diligent that at any time after my departure, you will be able to call these things to mind. So it seems very important to to be able to remember one's calling and to be ever ready to remind others of their calling. This is a responsibility for Christians and is one reason regularly attending church and fellowshipping with fellow believers is so important. Now, Paul declares in Colossians 2 that encouragement and building his siblings up is an important objective to him. He says that it's his goal that they be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. The writer of Hebrews also commands us to encourage one another daily as long as it is still called today so that we are not ensnared by sin. 
I could go on interminably, interminably with all these scriptures directly and indirectly commenting on this idea. A couple of examples, Hebrews 10.24 and 1 Thessalonians 5.11. But a couple of warnings about the technique and mechanics of encouraging and steering fellow believers from scripture are in line. So when a rebuke or admonition is necessary, we need to be mindful of the way we speak and broach the subject. Proverbs says, a soft answer turns away wrath. So sometimes all it takes is a delicately spoken reminder. But sometimes contact with the truth leads to uh, some sparks. Uh, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another, right? Being encouraged or rebuked by other believers may result in some testy exchanges, but if received in the spirit, may produce a stronger and sharper Christian. A vital objective of every Christian when it comes to reminders and exhortations to siblings is exquisitely defined in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11. Like apples of gold in settings of silver, so is a choice word spoken in a right circumstance. So cracking a wise one at a favorable moment in a conversation is like delivering a poignant reminder to a, to a fellow believer at an opportune time. Ephesians 4.29 says just as much. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear. So God evidently desires that we remain conscious of the attributes we must diligently replicate um, and, and why we must. So would I sin if I remembered God was always present with me? Certainly not. We must keep our eyes on the prize. Uh, so reminders and exhortations from other believers to do so will absolutely assist us in maintaining the narrow path and keep us from straying. We should be attempting to outdo one another in this case, just like we should do at work, in hospitality, in service, and even in board and ball games, and in really any other scenario. So my exhortation to you and to me this morning is a reminder to encourage one another to obedience, love, and good deeds, especially to keep one another cognizant of the scripture and the Spirit's work.